So this video is for a 1600 Crossflow. It's going to be another engine that I'm going to do the filming on from start to finish. Um, this is already a race engine for a Formula Ford and it's just a little bit down on power. Uh, these things apparently run about 122 horsepower roughly and this one's down at 116. So uh, the customer wants me to just um strip it top and tail it but what i want to do before i do that is just measure everything about it and and make notes of it so i'm going to use one of the apps that i've got on my ipad uh to save all the data i'm going to do a cam uh, cam timing check i'm going to measure the cc's in the block measure the deck height of the pistons measure the height of the of the valves and uh, and yeah and uh, we'll film all that too so we've got the inlet manifold off the cross flow i'm going to measure the valve depths now um i've got it sitting at tdc but one thing i have noticed the customer showed me the dyno chart and um basically the power just drops off all of a sudden and if i just walk outside so the light's better I've got a sneaky feeling it, it might be it did say that it fitted a new distributor and he's been having a few issues with the distributor and then if you could see in there the gap from the rotor arm to the HT pickup now that looks excessive to me so I need to do a little bit of research to see if that is one of the problem so on the formula ford engine the next thing i've noticed is if i move these two pipes out of the way that the lugs for the gearbox are broken off the block as well and i've just realized that they're taped up in here as well so i'm going to repair that part of the block for him So what I'm doing here is just finding true TDC and I'm using the flywheel to turn the cross fly because I don't want to disturb anything on the front. So first part I've got to do is just find out the dwell for how long it stays in one position for and then whatever that is in degrees divide that by two and then set it to that. I think that is about there. Just a slight tweak on the protractor. Okay, so that is TDC. Now what I wanna do is, sorry my phone rang. Um, yeah, so that's true TDC and what I'm gonna do now I found true TDC is also measure how far down the um, the piston is in the ball and then basically get some notes of everything what I want to do is just really carefully take the carbon off the top of the piston just like that um, right so what I'm going to do now is see how far down the bore the piston is sitting um, the, all these pre-checks are not necessarily needed when you strip an engine to rebuild but because this is a Formula Ford engine, what I've had nothing to do with before, I want to know that everything that I'm going to do is an improvement and that also if the engine can be um, stretched more to the rule book with dimensions and settings, if I measure it before, I know how much I can modify it for for when we rebuild it. So what I'm going to do is rock the piston to find out how much rock it has in it, in the piston. 
So if I set that to zero, and it's got nine thou. So what I want to do is then move the piston to four and a half thou, and then I know that my piston is sitting in the bore perfect. Then what I'm going to do is set that back to zero and then just really carefully roll the DTI onto the block. So I could see straight away that this piston is down the hole by 12 thou, roughly. In fact, what I've just actually noticed hmm. Well, it's a good job to check that. What I've just actually noticed is that my expensive DTI I can just um, show you if I tap that The needles come off I think so I'm gonna to have to take this apart and uh, and fix that that's um it's actually a bit frustrating but nevertheless I've got another one I'm uh, I'm really glad I checked that Use that for doing voxels, that extended piece there. And what I'm going to do is just check all my measurements again because I don't want this to be wrong. So I'm going to do TDC first. And then I'm going to check the rock on the piston. And then I'm going to check So it's actually nine thousandths of an inch. And that needle don't move when I give it a tap. So we know that we're nine thou down the pistons 9000 down the bore so we can run that flat top so straight away we can make an improvement on the engine because i can drop the uh drop the deck of the block down by another 9000 so the next thing that i want to do is to check the cam timing so i'm going to do that off cylinder number 1 i'm going to stick my bore gauge on top of the push rod and what I'm looking for is what degrees the inlet valve is fully open at straight away I can see that that needs a slight altering So it's coming up to TDC now, so what will happen is the inlet valve will just start to open. So 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a reading at 100 degrees. The other thing I've noticed is the engine's got a, yeah, such a slight tight spot in it, so I'm going to have to have a look at that too. So I'm going to take a reading when that's set there. And I just need my calculator to work out what the timing is set to. So the timing is set to exactly 112 degrees. So it's not out whether that's optimum for that cam I don't know at the moment but I can record the data that I found uh, the camshaft data that I found the fact that the piston is down a, a slight tad then when I've got this apart I'll run the camshaft up in my camshaft mas machine and play around with cam timing figures and see where exactly where that puts us but now I've taken those uh, readings I can finish rattling the engine apart So on the cross flow, what I'm doing now is taking the timing gear off. Now on these, they have originally, they have a little pointer on the crankshaft and a little notch in the camshaft. And when it's standard timing, they line up. So we've measured the, or I've measured the, um, the timing, it's 112 degrees, but how some people adjust the timing is they use offset keys or they don't even use keys and they just rely on how tight you do up the two half inch UNC uh, screws. The other thing that I've noticed on this is this is a brand new crankshaft. Um, it's only done roughly 500 miles of racing and the bearings are quite badly worn here and here which is either the rod has walked and that's out of line or when the crankshaft has been manufactured the inner part of the crankshaft is where they've measured it the journal and that's correct but as it comes out it kind of does this and what, what happens is, is it, it, it then loses the clearance, the oil clearance, and it would then wear the lead part of the bearing slightly. Um, but I'll measure the crankshaft as best as I can right in the corners um, once, once the engine's stripped. So that's the locking plate and the two screws. And then if I just take this off, we can see how the original guy's done the timing 
Yeah, so he's timed it by leaving the dowel out so he can basically get a little bit of movement on here like this to get his timing correct. This is also a thrust plate. You can see it's just wearing here. So what that does is it allows the cam to move ever so slightly like that. And now I can just very carefully take the camshaft out. Trying not to damage the camshaft bearings as it comes out. And then what I'm also looking for is as I'm stripping this, I'm looking at the camshaft bearings to make sure they're okay and that they don't need replacing. I'm having a look at, at the cam followers to make sure they're okay. And I'm just keeping an eye out on the cam as well. That's the markings on the back to say who's ground it. But we'll have a measure up of that to make sure all the journals are okay. It does look in good condition though, which is good. Uh, this engine spilt oil everywhere, but it's because it's dry sumped, um, the scavengers weren't drained. So it um, just makes a little bit of a mess. I definitely want to have a look why it's a bit tight. I don't like how it turns over really. That's the bottom end of the Formula Ford engine completely stripped and I need a good uh, read up now on the rules and regs for the engine. One thing I've found which I think is probably one of the worst bits of this engine is this polishing on, on these bearings here. It's only on the big ends, or it's mainly only on the big ends. It has shown itself a little bit on that number four cap in the corner. Now, that's either the, the rodders walked and they need correcting, or the crank has been polished and it's been polished too heavy in the middle uh, and not enough on the ends, which I actually think that's what the problem is. But I'm going to have to have a measure up of that to see. Uh, and then I'll speak to my customer and I'll probably speak to the manufacturer of the crankshaft because if that is the issue, then that's actually not good on their behalf. But I'm not saying what that's what it is. It could definitely be the Conrods. Um, it's very clean. It is, a like I said, it's a recent rebuild. So there is nothing wrong with it. The cam timing's right. Um there's nothing in here that I wouldn't do myself. I'm going to check the balance of it all. Um, so I'll record all that. The next Before I strip the cylinder head, I'm going to use my Pro Valve seat cutting machine because the back tester on that is very good. So I'm going to place the cylinder head there. So I've pressed, I've pressed vacuum report on the machine, switch the back tester on. And then what we're looking for, I don't know if the GoPro is picking it up from here, but there's a coloured gauge here and I want it all in the green. So that's perfect. 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 Another perfect one. And all I'm going to do now is spin it round and do the same on the inlet. Perfect. Perfect. 
so they're all perfect. My customer will, um, when I feed back the information that the engine is a good engine actually, um, the other engine builder's done a, a good job of it, there's nothing to say anything bad about and I'm, I'm not into um, calling people's work down if there's nothing wrong with it so there's things that I would change for myself which we're going to change to try and help him try and find these few extra horsepowers but I am convinced that it's the rotor arm that's caused the problem. I'm going to strip the cylinder head, I'm going to measure the installed height of the valve spring, I'm going to change the port in slightly, I'm not going to take any metal of it just to finish off it stick everything through the acid bath, get the parts in order and get this, uh, get this cross flow back to him as quick as we can. So on the Formula Ford, I'm trying to repair now the lugs that have come off the bell housing part of the block. So I've got to work out exactly where the bits go, clean them up and then get ready to try and, uh, try and weld it back together. So to do this, I'm gonna, I've got to get out the old stick welder and I've been and got some cast iron, uh, I've been and got some cast iron welding, welding rods from round at uh, Newbury Welding Supplies. So I'm gonna do a little bit of prep work at the moment, prep up the block, prep up these broken bits of lug uh, and then try and uh, stick weld it back together. So Sam's just milling off the gearbox end where we've welded it all up is being inspected by the volunator who's come to talk about racing ready for brands at so i'm balancing the formula ford crankshaft assembly today because this has got the formula ford engine's got to be built um, I've already ran the crank up just to get some basic figures and as a static mass it's actually in balance. Uh, you can see the machine here showing green in the middle but the red on both ends means the front and the rear is slightly out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just remove a little bit of metal from the two um, areas of the crank that need it, get the crank where it's closer, then bolt the other components on and keep balancing it. So this is the crank only here. This is now in balance because all three sections are green. So what I'm gonna do now is change the settings on the machine and I convert it over so instead of the weight needing to be taken um, from in between the two sensors, we set the machine up so it, it measures the weight that needs to be taken, all the out of balance from the outside of the centers. So basically, if I show you here, at the moment we've set the machine up so these are the two points where correction would be taken from. And what we now need to do is put the front pulley and the flywheel on, so we're gonna change it so the correction points are this part of the crankshaft. Just building up to speed. And then we can see from the screen here, we've got a major, in balance on the flywheel. So we're going to hold that data. Print the working copy and then just stop the machine. Yeah, that's not looking great, that, um, that flywheel. 39. 39.2 grams out of balance at 39 degrees. So we'll have to start doing a bit of work on that and try and get it back in. So all we do is we work out exactly where from this point here, 39 degrees is, and then just start putting some holes in to get the balance right. So I'm measuring that it's out of balance around here and, and I did notice that 
it has been balanced before virtually opposite so I think these holes here have actually knocked it out of balance but we can correct that so that's the flywheel now in I've only worked on this side the front pulley still in and the front pulley because it's um, it just drives the dry sump belt there's not really many places I can take weight from definitely this close to the center line of the crank it's not going to really make any difference um, so I've left that well alone and then there are the holes that I've had to machine into the or drill into the flywheel to get it in balance that one there is pretty deep and then that one there just to trim it in so the thing I've got to do now is bolt the clutch onto it and balance that so right so I'm hoping that is the Formula Ford engine done it's just building speed up yeah it is I'll show you that so it was all pretty well out of balance every single part of it needed some minor adjustment but the flywheel was far out of balance now because these engines are very very strict on the rules every single last little bit we could do to improve the engine will help we just need it to steal like ones and twos of horsepowers just so we know that we're exactly right on the uh, the limit of the rule book and the limit of performance for the engine so now this is completely balanced the next thing for me to do is to take it all back apart polish the crankshaft and then get it in the engine so we've just got the cam in the formula ford i've just taken a load of measurements off it so we can record the data for that I've screwed in these little homemade block stands that I've got um, so I'm going to quickly go and polish the crank measure it and then flick this over and then just carry on with the build the crank is the cranks in the polisher and the reason that I want to or the crank grinder and the reason that I want to polish it is when I run it on the balancer the hard wheels on the or the hard bearings on the balancer um, you could just see where it's rolled on the crank uh, and also there is some little bits of wear on the crank which I just want to try and blip them out and then I also just want to take care because I'm pretty sure that there's some concave shape onto the, the big ends because of the way it's wearing the journals so I'm just going to polish them and just make sure that's all good as well so the next thing that I'm going to do is just take some measurements of the crank as well So with that all done I'm going to now put that in the cleaner for half an hour just to get any of the swarf out of the oil ways and whatnot.
So what I'm doing is I'm coming up to 40 foot pound, which won't make the torque wrench beep vibrate or anything because we've not actually hit the, the preloaded end torque. I'm not snagging on the torque wrench. It's nice, even pressure just till I get to 40. And then once I've got to 40 foot pound, I'll then just make sure that the crankshaft turns real nice and freely by hand. Which it does. I mean, that feels lovely. That's just got the um, build lube in it, which makes it a little bit springy almost because the viscosity of it. So now I don't need to do any adjustments to this because I preloaded it to the 60 foot pound. And what will happen is this is a snap-on ATEC torque wrench. So this actually counts as we're hitting each bolt. So not that I will forget because I won't, but what this will do if it's your first engine build and you've got one of these torque wrenches, you know that there's 10 main caps and it will tell you in this counter up here that you've hit that torque wrench setting 10 times. So if you get to the end and it says seven, somewhere you've um, made a mistake. So now I'm steadying the block with this hand and then I'm just really gently pulling up with that end. As you get to these end couple of bolts, it, it makes the engine want to rotate this way instead of rotate that way. So I just have to move where I secure the block with. And that's it. That's definitely all 10 done, but what I can do is just double check it by looking in this top corner here in a sec when it stops flashing and it'll just say 10 there. So the next thing for me to do is switch the torque wrench off and I want to check the end flow. I've checked the camshaft end flow already. So this is the crankshaft end flow. So I'll set up the DTI on the end of the block and then set up the measuring point on the on the DTI and I'm just making it where I've got some load in the spring of the gauge too and then I'm going to push it all the way backwards zero the DTI and then just move it all the way forwards and you, you can actually hear it and see it. And that's five thousandths of an inch end float there. So that's absolutely bang on. So that's another job done. I'm just going to record that data and then move on to the next thing. I'm not going to fit, although I've got the rings and everything, I'm not going to put no more pistons in until I've made sure that the combustion chamber is to the spec of the engine. So I'm just going to turn it over by hand. Now the rules for this engine is the piston mustn't come above the head face. And that feels absolutely perfect to me, but feeling it isn't, isn't spot on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure it. This will also tell us true TDC. So then I'm gonna zero the dial gauge and then just really carefully just move the, t the, the piston through TDC just so I know that my zero is spot on, which it is. And then I'm going to carefully just roll the bore gauge over. And that tells me that the, um, the piston is two thousandths of an inch below the deck face, which is good news. 
So I'm gonna put my DTI away. And then the next measurement I need to take is how many cc's are in this combustion chamber here. So I've already measured the piston to work out how many cc's are roughly in the in this in the land of the piston which is the area from the top part of the top ring so from here up to here now the one bit that's tricky is to work out this cut out here so i think i've got it just about perfect I mean, normally we grease around here and we only take a reading from the top. So even just trying to work out these bits here is, is, is making it far more accurate than what it would be normally. So now that's on TDC, I'm going to get some grease and I'm going to go all the way around here and then with the barrette measure what's in here. So what I've done there is measured the cc's in the combustion chamber in the piston um, what's different about one of these cross flow engines is a lot of the time normal cylinder heads have the combustion chamber as a as a dome um, where with a cross flow the heads are basically flat and the valves are flat almost like a diesel and the combustion chamber is part of the piston and the cylinder head gasket. So what I've done is I remember when I was looking through the rules and regs, there was a minimum setting that this could be. So we've made this right because the, the, the piston was down the hole by quite a few thou. So we've skimmed the right amount off the cylinder, off the cylinder block to get that right. Now we've measured, calculated the cc's in the combustion chamber. So what I'm going to quickly do is have a quick read of the rules just to make sure that that is all perfect before we carry on with the build. Okay, so I've just gapped all the piston rings on this. Uh, the gap is the standard rings, standard size rings, and the gap's a little bit more than what you'd probably normally run, only by a few thou, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable to, to let that go. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is measure the stretch on the bolt. These are ARP big end bolts, and to get the uh, correct yield on the bolt, you have to stretch them. And when you buy the bolts, they come with a torque wrench setting and a stretch setting. So what I do is, I do them both. I measure the stretch using a, a, a stretch gauge. This is an ARP stretch gauge. So I'm gonna set it to zero. I've nipped these bolts up and then I've backed them off and then just put the tiniest little bit of pressure on them. So I've set my, stre my stretch gauge to zero, and then you can just check it, give it a little wobble around, but the bolt has got um, a little divot in it for the back part of this to sit in, and so is the, the head of the bolt. So I'm gonna take that out now, and the easiest way that I've found to do it is you can put a spanner on it, but a spanner's about this long, they're quite thin, and trying to pull the a right amount of stretch on it, it's it's quite tricky. So I'm gonna use the torque wrench and I'm gonna start at 45 foot pound because no, sorry, I'm gonna start at 35 foot pound because normally to get the right stretch, my experience tells me that normally it's between 45 and 50 foot pound. So I'm just setting the torque wrench up at the moment, get it into the right setting. Now that's set to 35 foot pound. And then I'm gonna really carefully just bring it up to torque. I'm watching these traffic lights as well. They go um, amber, green, and then if you've gone too far, they'll turn red. So I'm just keeping an eye on them to make sure that they go green. And 
and then the same with this one. And then what I'm going to do is just measure what that's stretched by. So that's now stretched four thousandths of an inch. So what I'm going to do now is go up another ten. See that's gone to 46.9 and it's gone red. So it's gone nearly two foot pound over and the torque wrench has let me know that I've gone a little bit too far. So that's now five. So what I'm gonna do now is just go up to say 48. that's exactly six down. So I'm gonna leave that at that. I'm gonna put my stand back in. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate how many cc's are in the combustion chamber of the piston. So I'll just give these a little nip up. I'm also gonna put a paint dot on here and here. I've got all four pistons back in the Formula Ford engine now. The bottom end's torqued up. I bolted the flywheel on and I put the protractor on the front of the engine because the next job that I want to do is set the cam timing. Now I measured the cam timing when I first stripped the engine and I want to put it back roughly where it was before. So what I'm going to do is just nip up these two bolts here or nip one of them up and then set another gauge up to start taking the measurements. What, I, what I've done first is very carefully found true TDC and then I'll show you that. Just move my pointer over a little bit. So that there is true TDC. Now, the reason I've bolted the flywheel on is because I've tightened up this protractor. Whenever I can, I like to try and turn the engine with the flywheel because then I know there's no chance of me knocking the pointer or this moving slightly and moving the protractor. So I know that once this is set, if I, change, if I turn it by the flywheel, that's it. That's, that's the way it's going. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is put one of the push rods in because I'm setting it up uh, on number one cylinder inlet valve. So I'm gonna put the push rod into number one inlet valve, then set up another gauge and then set the degrees of the, of the cam up to what my customer wants. So I've roughed the cam timing out once, but I thought I would just do a quick explanation of how I do them on cross flows. I can't give you the exact figures because my customer wants to keep his cam timing figures to himself because he likes the power delivery. So, um, but what I do is I work it out where it's on the dwell. So that's basically, you move the engine in direction of rotation and what you're looking for is the DTI to stop moving. You take that reading and then you keep watching the DTI until it starts to fall back and then you take that reading, you minus the first from the second and then you divide that figure by two and then add that figure to the first figure or take it away from the second figure. Um, and that will give you the cam timing. But what I'm also doing is I'm checking it to get it more accurate because try because the eye can't pick up perfectly the DTI to get it more accurate I'm going to do it while the valve is still in motion so I'm bringing the engine up to where I know it's right and then I'm picking a point on the DTI way before the dwell point 
which is there. And then I'm taking the reading off the gauge and then carrying on turning the engine in direction of rotation until I've gone past the dwell point or maximum lift and then bringing it back to the same point on the DTI and then taking another reading. And that's it. So that, that now gives me my cam timing figure, which is exactly exactly where my customer wants it. Um, what we've done is the cam timing that was on it before, we're just changing it by a degree just to try and bring the engine on a bit quicker. So that's all locked off anyway, because I really nipped that up. And I'm just going to make sure it's nipped up bend the lock tabs over and then carry on dressing the front of the engine so all of this timing gear can come off it now. Well, we're getting there now with the Formula Ford. That's all the valve clearance is set. So what I'm gonna do now is um, bolt the front cover on, get the clutch on, turn it over, get all the dry sump gear back, back, uh, bolted back to it, and then just strip and rebuild the dry sump pump for it. Water pump. Yeah, it's looking, uh, it's looking real nice. I really like the color of it too. So I'm just finishing off the Formula Ford engine and I'm putting the clutch on now. And the clutch has got two halves to it basically, a flat half and then it's got this part here which has got the spline on it and the springs to take some vibration out of it. Now it's important to make sure the clutch goes on the right way because if you put this on that way round, this part will bottom out on the flywheel bolts and the clutch won't work. I also use an old bit of input shaft on anything Ford, which is basically, it's known as inch 23. So it's an inch diameter 23 teeth. So that's just cut straight out the input, input shaft of a gearbox. Because I've checked the balance of this, I've marked the clutch with a couple of dots and the flywheel as well. So I know that'll only go on one way. And then I'm just gonna torque the bolts on. So that's the 1600 Crossflow Formula Ford engine all complete now and ready for my customer to collect. Um, I printed off all of the rules and regs and I've gone through everything just to make sure the engine is um, absolutely perfect regulation rise and it is. I've rebuilt this engine but I, I can't take the credit for the initial build because it was already pretty well perfect to be honest it was a good engine it just needed a few little tweaks um, I measured <clears throat> the rules are very tight on cc's and compression and things like that but when I measured the bottom end I could get away with getting a little bit more out the bottom end so we've done that we've checked the balance of it all and apart from some very minor adjustments um, it was really good so it's all built up we've painted it a lighter blue because that's what the customer wanted We've put the distributor in, but I've not put the 
cap and rotor arm on because when I stripped it, I pointed out that there was a, we think there's an issue with the rotor arm. So we've checked the distributor, that's fine. So my customer Richard needs to replace the rotor arm now. So I'm gonna leave that off. He also needs to replace the dry sump uh, pipes. So I've left them off and just taped everything up so no uh, dirt or anything can get in there. Um, and also with all the bolts and everything that he gave me, there's a bolt missing out the inlet manifold and a bolt missing out the distributor. So I'm gonna leave them out now because I'm gonna wait until he gets here. I can always put a bolt in, I've got no problem with that, but I don't know if there's a bracket off one of these. So I thought I'd wait for to show Richard first. So everything's torqued up. I haven't put a sticker on it because I don't know if he wants me to put a sticker on it, so I've left that off for now. We've just marked it to say that we've been in there in case, you know, when we get it back, we know that we, we have been in there and we've had a look at it and whatnot. But yeah, it's uh, I've quite enjoyed doing that, 1600 cross flow. It's a, it's a bit different. I do a lot of 1300 cross flows for the low cost, but not a 1600. And uh, I really like the blue that we painted it as well. He wanted to brighten the blue up and I think we've, uh, I think we've hit it right there, so. So yeah, I'm just waiting for Richard to come and collect it and then oh, we'll be getting on with something else. What I am doing today actually is I'm gonna sort out my toolbox because I've got tools in two workshops and it is driving me crazy. Sam and Graves are getting the race car ready. So we're gonna do a prep, uh, prepping the car before brands. I'm gonna just move away from the music, sorry. Uh, we're doing a prepping the car before brands uh, video as well. So I don't know when Tracy's gonna get that out, but um once again guys thanks for watching thanks for all the subscribers out there and all the thumbs up and all the likes i really do appreciate that um if you could give it a sub uh, if you could hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet it's only down there it, it means a lot to us it helps uh it helps with everything really and uh we'll keep making the videos for you um if there's anything you guys want to see leave it in the comments section below if there's any any questions you've got, leave it in the comment sections below and we'll do our best to, to get them out answered. It uh, doesn't matter what it is really, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer any engine questions or anything in general really. And uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next video. Take care, bye.